Uh, so thank you very much for joining us today, uh, for joining me today. Uh, today I will be showing you how to turn uh, 2D generated images. Uh, well, I generated them using the journey, but there's also a bunch of other AI tools nowadays to generate them. And uh, how to turn them into three, uh, 3D clean uh, quad meshes with the help of uh, Rhino and Grasshopper and uh, another AI tool, which allows us to extract depth, map, uh, depth uh, maps. Um, so, uh, yeah, maybe we'll uh, wait for a minute or two until everyone can join this, uh, everyone interested can join this uh, live session. So, in the meantime, just wanted to let you know that um, myself and my colleagues, we also uh, we created a parametric design market, which is going to be added to the description of this uh, session. So, please uh, check it out. And... Um, yeah, also, please drop a comment if you have any ideas, suggestions, or if you'd like uh, us to see modeling or uh, explaining something related to Rhino Grasshopper. And um, yeah, we're also going to be doing some uh, more, more sessions about uh, AI and uh, uh, other machine learning tools in a soon. So let's say we're trying to do it every week. Um, okay, yeah, so I see uh, my colleagues uh, letting me know that uh, there are several people already joined, so uh, yeah, let's let's just start. So um, basically, uh, the workflow that I'm going to show you, it's actually quite straightforward, and I was actually surprised how quick and uh, efficient it is. Of course, I need to <laughs> give a very uh, uh, small disclaimer, first of all, that the stage at which uh, at which we're at now uh, it doesn't allow us to convert an image to a complete 3D environment for the interior with like really complex uh, shapes. Well, maybe some tools do, but today we're going to be uh, talking about uh, yeah, today we're going to be talking about um, some uh, some other techniques, which I, I still find them quite impressive. So, uh, to put it short, let's, let's move on. Let's uh, get into this um, um, workflow. And uh, specifically for this uh, session, I generated a few uh, images. Like, this is uh, an image generated with uh, Mid Journey. Uh, I was using just some uh, really, really basic prompts and really, really basic reference images uh, to feed the um, Mid Journey algorithm. Right. Uh, this one is the one I'm going to use for this uh, session. This image uh, has simply been mirrored. First of all, it was generated by Midjourney, then it was mirrored to get this uh, texture, this pattern, uh, how to call it. And this is the other one, which we can also we can also give it a try. So uh, yeah, let's let's uh, let's move on. Let's. Um, uh, open this tool. I have it already opened. So this tool is called uh, Zoo Depth. It's uh, an AI tool which allows you to generate a depth map. Basically, you take any image and you extract depth map. What is basically the difference between simply taking an image and desaturating it, making it black and white, and extracting the depth map? Well, when you just desaturate an image, it literally takes any color on your image and makes it um, keeps the brightness but makes it monochrome, uh, monochrome. So for example, let's say if uh, I use an image sampler in the software just to show you how how it work, double left click, we pick this uh, this um, image from uh, here, so this one. Uh, I say okay, right and then we can we can also I mean, it doesn't. It's not gonna in, uh, impact the um, the um, the work of this component. It's just gonna uh, just for us to see this image, not distorted, but with the actual proportions, right? You see, this image is is um, uh, it has colors, right? It has some shades. It's it's not monochrome. Uh, and uh, this image basically uh, has some dark areas. So, for example, this part of the image, it's a lot, uh, it, it should be a lot more extruded, right, than, for example, this part, but they have almost the same 
shape, right? So if we simply say, um, yeah, if we just say brightness instead of colors, you see uh, this part is super white, super bright, right? But we as humans, we can realize that this is just a very bright thing, but it's it's located farther from us than, for example, this point, right? But because of this conversion, it, uh, if we use the brightness as a driver for uh, extruding our mesh or based on this image, right? Uh, then uh, this part is going to be the most extruded towards us and this part is going to be quite far away. So this is, this is not, not what we're looking for here. What we're looking for is actually an AI which understands how does this, um, how does this, uh, how, how to generate this depth map, right? So we drag and drop this uh, image here into Zoho Depth. Super straightforward, super simple workflow, right? And then we just say here, submit, right? Then it takes uh, approximately like, I would say half a minute. Sometimes it takes more. Also depends on the image size and image, um, let's say, um, resolution, right? Um, we can't really control the quality of this of this um, image here, at least for now, right? Maybe they will develop in the future. Uh, but it, for an open tool, for for an uh, open source tool, which is like free, anyone can access it. It's it's quite uh, quite a nice uh, thing as well. Uh, right. So yeah, you see, we generated this image. Uh, it recognizes some 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 of these parts. It recognizes them as. Um, for example, here, recognize this part should be uh, closer to us than this part, right? And uh, yeah, then we just right click on this image, we say save image as, and we save it as uh, like in the folder. Let's say uh, I'm going to call it that map, not the original. And uh, yeah, then we need to start using, instead of using this image, we need to start using the depth map. So let me just create another. Actually, let me put it here. This, this image sampler, I'm going to turn it to, uh, from, from, the, from brightness, I'm going to turn it to RGBA colors, right, because actually, actually we can turn it into, into can keep it as, as brightness, right? And then I'm going to click on this again and pick this depth map again, and I say okay, right? So you can tell the difference, right? Basically, this is just simply a desaturated image, right, which is... Um, I mean, yeah, you can see the difference. You can see that here, these parts are recognized um, a lot better than here. So, now it's time for us to actually start uh, start uh, building this mesh, right? So I'm gonna, I'm gonna go to front view, actually, because we're gonna be making something similar to the facade or the bus relief, let's say, something like that. And then I'm gonna uh, simply create one one layer, right? Let's call it uh, base picture one, and uh, with type picture, um, get to the folder of today's session. Take this depth map. Um, we only need this thing just for just to know the actual dimensions of this image, right? So we don't. We don't really need this image. We can just make a rectangle with these uh, dimensions. But as as we have already this uh, image, why why can't we just use it, right? So then we need to bring in this surface into Grasshopper, right? So we set on surface, take it, right? Uh, and now we need to divide it into um, square grid. Well, as much as possible, as close as possible to being a square grid. So we say uh, dimensions, uh, and now we need to get some uh, some good resolution, but still not not too crazy of a resolution because uh, it might get a bit heavy for the for the computer to uh, actually compute it, right? So we take two. Actually, let me bring in the bifocals so we can uh, see the names. Uh, it's 206 and 60, almost 70, let's say, so I'm going to use uh, 5.0 to start with. I think this, this is not going to give us quite a good resolution, but yeah, it's still something. So let's see. And then we say divide surface. So we have to generate these uh, points, right? 
um, here. Yeah, this is this is not for a good resolution. So let's let's set the limit as zero point two, for example. Just so if we don't get to the zero, because when we get to zero, it's uh, yeah, it's gonna crash for sure. At uh, at two, I think this already gives us quite a good resolution, but maybe we go a bit further and we have one point five, right? Uh, so this is approximately the dimension of uh, one. Um, uh, like between the points, right? Approximately. Uh, okay, so now what we need to do, we need to take these uh, points, right? And we need to uh, basically move them perpendicularly to this surface. So we say uh, surface closest point, right? Like this. This is the point, this is the surface. Again, I'm going to create a separate uh, container for the surface so we don't uh, create too much. Uh, of a mess here, something like this. And then we say evaluate surface, right, just to get the normals. Okay. Um, all right. Uh, I would also say that we can flatten this thing, and uh, actually, we also have to reparameterize the surface. Why? Well, because image sampler that we're going to work with, it works with um, with uh, UV parameters and they are located in the domain from, from 0 to 1, right? Basically pretty similar to how the graph mapper works. Um, so, and then, yeah, just, just to make sure our our map uh, is um, was read correctly, we can uh, actually hide everything, right, and hide these things. And then we need to say uh, custom preview. We need to flatten these points. And then we need to, actually okay, we can just use these ones because they're gonna be matching. And we're gonna use these colors. Oh. Ah, yes, right, because we need to take, uh, not brightness, we need to take uh, colors. There we go. You see, so basically this is a very, very simple representation of our uh, grid, right? Uh, in colors, so by looking at this, we can already tell that okay, the data is um, mapped correctly. The um, points are uh, are fine here, right? So colors are fine. Uh, everything is alright. We don't need this anymore, so I'm just gonna hide it. And uh, yeah, now we're gonna turn it back to brightness because we need uh, but numbers from zero to uh, one. Thing. And now we need to move these uh, points, right? These points, we need to move them. Uh, using the normals as uh, vectors, so we have the component called amplitude, right? So the normals are going to be here, and um, these numbers, we actually have to remap them uh, to, yeah, we have to remap them, as simple as that. We say remap numbers, right? Um, we take bounds here. Uh, we can even go a bit further, uh, a bit more uh, precisely, right? So if we want to control the um, amount of, uh, like, for example, maybe we want to keep these parts completely flat, right? So then we can also use a graph mapper and uh, control the extrusion a bit more with the graph. Let me say the map again. Uh, by the way, for those of you who have a uh, heteroptera plugin, we can also just uh, no, 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 right. no, no, yeah, you can also substitute this part by this component right here. But yeah, I'm, I'm going to try to make it as uh, I'm going to try this script with as uh, as few plugins as possible. So uh, yeah, we say construct domain, and uh, we basically can control the amount of exclusion. So let's say. Uh, yeah. The black one to be zero. In the darkest points of this image, I want to be uh, flat, and the brightest I want them to be uh, extruded. So by say 18 maybe millimeter. Uh, it's not millimeters; it's units, uh, because we don't really care about scale for the for the moment. So we connect this to amplitude. We connect this to point, and you see already. I mean, it's not that visible, but you can see that some of these points, that something is happening with these points, right? 
So uh, what we need to do next, like in, in 3D, you see we can, uh, we can see that this uh, geometry is, uh, cha has changed quite a lot, right? Uh, and now we need to basically build a mesh from this thing. So let's take the simplest way to create a mesh, which is Delaney mesh. Super simple, actually, if you guys are interested, I suggest to uh, read about this, uh, read about this um, tool. Quite interesting. Even, even in, in Wikipedia, it's explained quite well, I think. But there are also some books about mesh modeling and so on. Let me know if you're interested. I will, I will uh, also add um, a list of uh, the books about mesh modeling and about computational design. Uh, let me know in the comments. Also, if you have any good books, uh, please let us know as well. It would be interesting too. So, uh, yeah. Uh, so now we need to basically connect these points to P, right? But here you see that it's by default it takes the world XY plane, right? So we need to change the plane in which this mesh is going to be built. So we need to build this mesh in a plane of this surface, right? So you can say planar, and there is a component called is planar, which basically allows us to understand if a surface is planar or if it's uh, if it's uh, not. And in any case, it generates the plane which is as close as possible to the to this surface, right? So we can use this plane as a as a plane right here. And you see, basically, we are getting this geometry, right? So if we want to see how does it look, again, we create custom preview. Custom preview is not only to see the final result, right? It's also to check the progress of your of your work and of your file and so on. So, uh, well, I mean, it's, it's already looking not, not too bad, but I think it's still quite, quite uh, rough in parts, and also it's not, not very, uh, yeah, it's a bit um, dodgy, let's say. Uh, why does it happen? Well, probably because, because of the, uh, because of the uh, resolution, first of all, so we can increase it even more, right? So if we say, uh, instead of 1.5, say 1, for example, you see how much more refined does it look, right? And uh, if we keep increasing this resolution, you can also say uh, 0 0.6. It's going to be almost uh, four times better because, like, it's uh, 1.5. Uh, it's basically uh, it gets um, better and like more. It gets more polygons uh, by uh, um, by the power of two, right? So it's not uh, just twice; it's four times. Uh, so this is this already looks quite good to me, but uh, there are still uh, this mesh is still uh, triangulated, right, and it's still not as smooth as we could get it. So now uh, it comes uh, time for some magic of uh, Rhino. There's a really really nice tool which is I'm pretty sure most of you are already familiar with it. If not, great, you will learn something new today. It's called uh, Quadri Mesh, right? So. Uh, it's actually quite a nice, quite a nice tool, which uh, allows us to uh, generate really, really high-quality mesh. You see, right now we have eighty thousand polygons, which is probably a bit too much. Uh, we can go for twenty thousand. Still going to take around ten seconds, I think. This 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 operation in Rhino takes in Grasshopper takes quite some time, but the result is going to be way better. Uh, and yeah, then we need to provide the mesh. Right, we need to provide the guides. Well, this is optional; we don't need it. And the settings. So, let's take the uh, settings. What do mesh settings? And uh, we connect this to uh, target count. Right. And here, we also need to provide the symmetry axis. Right. So right now we we have this. Um, yeah, we, need, we want to use the x-axis as uh, symmetry because we want the top part to be symmetrical with this one, right? So we take it like this. And the, this, uh, this uh, thing uh, is, uh, this surface is placed along the x-axis, right? So, uh, yeah, let's connect it to settings and let's connect this to mesh. It's going to take, as I think, around 10 to 12 seconds, more or less. Uh, because this, yeah, this uh, remeshing is always quite a heavy. Ah, actually, it was seven seconds, not too bad. Remeshing is always quite a heavy operation. So, uh, oh, interesting. This is uh, not something I expected, to be honest. But let's see how can we fix it. So, first of all, let's try to see how we work without symmetry. 
Um, maybe it's gonna be better if we use it in uh, in X Y plane, which we can also do by the way. It's not not a problem at all. Um, yeah, as I said, it uh, more than it takes some time to, to process. Mm -hmm. Maybe 20,000 was a bit too much, so maybe I'm gonna, uh, once it unfreezes, I'm gonna decrease this number a little bit. And actually, that's, that's general advice. <laughs> I always uh, tend to forget about it myself that it's better to test with a uh, smaller amount of polygons and resolution, but it's fine. It'll be, uh, be okay. So, uh, Yeah, this is probably uh, taking a bit uh, too long, so um, is it, ah, yes, 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 yes. It took two minutes. Wow, that's that's a lot. I'm gonna disable this thing for the moment. Also, by the way, uh, very good idea to save the document before we actually start. Uh, our experiments because if it has already been saved uh, it's uh, gonna be recovered so if we if it crashes if we close it it's, it next time we open grasshopper it will offer us to um, use this um, yeah it will basically suggest us if we would like to open this file uh, um, the recovery file that was what I was looking for so uh, yeah, let's see how how does it look now. Uh, okay, fine. And then uh, instead of twenty k, let's go for something like nine k. Uh, let's first of all let's have a look at how how does it look now. Uh, still not too bad, I would say. Still kind of okayish. Ah, also let's change the graph a little bit, right? So we can so we can control the. Uh, Amount of extrusion, right? So we get a bit more. No, this is not not what I want. Not what I wanted, but anyway, uh, we can can see it a little bit, right? So we get this um, darker surfaces become flat, and we get higher contrast. So uh, okay, let's let's have a look at, uh, once again at this uh, this thing, right? So. Um, I'm wondering what if we try to make it to turn it right because uh, this we have to switch the top view because I mean it's it's a very simple uh, very basic Euclidean operation just uh, flip it that's it we're just gonna rotate it right so uh, yeah now we need to take this uh, thing so enable um, again. It takes some time to compute. Uh, hopefully not two minutes like it did before. Um, then we need to provide the symmetry axis. Yeah, then we need to go to the slider. So um, yeah. Yeah, so it's 25 seconds. Uh, not too bad, not not uh, amazing, but not too bad either. So then we need to take uh, the um, Symmetry axis, right? So we need to use uh, we need to make a slider from zero to two. Then we use a uh, value of one, right? The um, yeah, the x axis basically is going to be symmetrical. Let's see if it's uh, if it's going to make it lighter because I think it should because technically we have to compute yeah exactly it has to compute only uh, one half of this mesh and then it can mirror it. So we're still getting some some. Artifacts here, I would say, but let's try to make it. Let's try to increase the resolution a little bit. Um, still take not so much time. 
yeah exactly you see so now it's now it's a lot better and a lot cleaner as well so uh, once we have the clean base we can go to weaverbird plugin which um, has this uh, amazing academy clark subdivision component we connect it to this mesh right and you see you you can already appreciate the grid of this um, mesh right look how clean and how quad it is right so you see basically it's um, yeah it's, it's really really nice uh, mesh grid and uh, yeah so i'm gonna create another slider from one to three right and we use it as a level of subdivision uh, i don't think we need to go beyond that we can we can of course right so this mesh is going to be even more refined. Of course, if we're looking for some fabricatable thing, this is the way to go, right? So we can uh, make a bus relief or something like this. Uh, and yeah, final final step I'm going to do, I'm going to uh, give it some uh, some nice uh, gradient color, but not necessarily gradient, actually. We can just go with one color. I uh, just want to make uh, some uh, nice color swatch, maybe something like this for the material. Of the surface itself, right? It's a bit too bright. Uh, let's switch it. Actually, let's keep it, but let's just make it a bit more darker. Right? And then I also want to change the display color, background color to something like this. Yes, there we go. And then uh, one last step is uh, we can extract the edges of this mesh. So we say mesh edges, right? This one is going to be really heavy, right? You see, we merge the uh, naked edges and uh, interior edges, and then we go to I think it's human plugin, uh, it's called custom uh, review line weights. This one, so this operation is also taking around like more, almost 400 milliseconds, then we take the color swatch. Let's take something similar but darker, maybe something like that. You see, right? We're getting this really, really high density uh, grid. Also, another another trick uh, is actually uh, taking this mesh with uh, lower resolution, right? Using higher resolution mesh for geometry and lower resolution mesh for the edges. So the grid is not as dense, right? I mean, sometimes it doesn't really work like here, for example. So up to you guys uh, how you want to approach this. Uh, but yeah, also sometimes sometimes for render, you probably don't even need this. You can say preview off, and you can just uh, add this mesh here. So if, you, if we want to turn this uh, mesh into something like um, something uh, fabricatable, let's say. We can also use another trick. We can also keep the edges of this mesh, we can keep them uh, flat, right? So we can go for, um, yeah, actually, before we do the quad mesh, we can also take the, this still on the mesh. Actually, even even not even before you can take this amplitude, right? And uh, after we extract the B rep edges from our base surface, and so we uh, join the curves, and we use these curves in, as an attractor to basically keep these edges uh, flat. So we say full point. Do this matches geometry, right? And we use these uh, points as uh, as points, basically. Right? So we say uh, again, we basically duplicate this this entire thing. And then here, instead of using from 0 to 18, we use from 0 to 1. Basically, default uh, domain, we say multiplication. Multiply this amplitude by this amplitude, right? So...
Okay, and then we connect this to A. Let's see how how uh, yes. So you see by default, actually, I kind of I kind of like how it looks. But uh, yeah, of course, this is not our uh, goal. Our goal would be to first of all I'm gonna disable this one right, and enable this one, and then uh, by changing this uh, this graph, I'm gonna like this. You see, basically, we keep the edges flat, right? And uh, yeah, there we go. So now, uh, once we enable this uh, guy thing, we will get our gem. Yeah, see? So this thing, we just have to cap it or to add some thickness here and cap it afterwards. And uh, yeah, we can uh, we can uh, pretty much uh, replicate it. Also, yeah, we can also replicate. Uh, can we actually? I think we should be able to do it with the base, uh, the base surface. Yeah. Let's see. Ah uh, no. Oh, it actually looks pretty cool as well, but it's not. It's not. Um, so basically, the symmetrical axis is defined by the base plane as well, right? So uh, when we do the quadrimension, the symmetrical axis basically takes a that's why wall plane, right? So uh, the easiest thing to do will be to rotate this um, this thing afterwards. Uh, we can take the YZ plane, right? Rotate it by 90 degrees. Yeah. So this is it. And of course, now uh, we can uh, we can also take the sun and change its. Uh, yeah. So we get this nice uh, bath relief for rendering. Okay, so uh, yeah, I would say for today, uh, this is it for the exercise. However, uh, we're also gonna post more content about uh, AI, especially about turning images from uh, 3D to 3D. We are working on a few really interesting workflows now. So this is just, just the very, very first, very basic one. Um, we're also gonna be sharing some of these workflows and some of these uh, scripts on our website. So please subscribe to our YouTube channel and also this is our ah, this one this is our website. Yeah, so uh, where we have the courses if you'd like to study with us, and uh, yeah, we're giving a lot of grasshopper courses, Rhino courses, uh, starting Houdini courses soon and. Uh, also, the um, yeah, we're also working on a course based on AI, and we also have our parametric design market where you can uh, actually get these uh, scripts that we worked on, and also some models. For example, it's uh, holidays coming soon, so you can get some uh, nice decoration for your house. Uh, this is also a really nice way to support us. We really appreciate it, and uh, yeah, thanks to everyone for uh, being here with me today, and. Uh, um, yeah, I will hopefully see you soon. Let us know in the comments.